key flags and to jot down what we know about the subjects and the country and the symbols. So that is the first thing I would like you to do, please, lovely. So that's our little do now. And you have three minutes and then we'll take some feedback. Uh, where is everybody else? I'm now looking at my chat, sweetheart, because quite a few of the class have sent me a chat about it. So I'm just going to look and see what they're saying. Don't worry about it, Ahmed. You just get on, lovely. I will send them a link. Apparently they're stuck in a waiting room, but they're certainly not in this waiting room, are they? So I'm not sure. Let me just have a look, sweetheart, and I'll just send them the link. And then that answers your question as well, Ahmed. I don't know why some of our class are stuck in the waiting room. That's a bit of a mystery. But there you go. We'll go and sort them out. Bless them. Right, we've sent them the new link across, so hopefully they will arrive very shortly. But to start with, what flags are they? Eleanor, do you know, lovely? Ahmed, do you know what flags they are? They are. Uh, the USSR and US. Yep, yeah, good. And do you know what the symbols are or anything that are on them? Uh, the stars on the US flag represent the number of states. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what the uh, sickle ends. I'm a sickle and star. On the US South Rack. Okay. Do you know anything else about the countries? Uh, and what what are you looking for? Is just anything you know about them? Uh, uh, this is our. Well, has been disbanded, not disbanded, but is no longer a country. It's been replaced by uh, Russia and some surrounding. Good. Sienna, do you know anything about either of uh, these countries or their flags? Um. So the one at the bottom is uh, America and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the full extent. It's American. That's okay. 
Right, so if we just have a look at our next slide, lovelies, what we have is the Soviet Union, so Ahmed was correct, well done, and it existed between 1917 and 1991, and it is red to show the star and the hammer for communism, and we're going to think about what we mean by communism in a second. We then have, as you've just said, Siena, the American flag, so awesome and founded, so it started in 1776, 13 stripes, because there were 13 colonies when it first got put together. And then we've got 52 stars, because each of the stars represents one of the states that are in America. So what we are doing today is our taster session into the IGCSE, so it's slightly different. And I know there are a lot of taster sessions for history this week because I'm doing a couple more and Mrs. Dunton's doing a few. So it will go across most of the week. So some people are joining different sessions, which is why we've just got a nice little group. So what are we going to study? I will go through what we're studying, what the syllabus looks like, and then we are going to do a little bit of history about the Cold War. And that will be more like an ordinary lesson. So if we think about what we're studying at GCSE, you're studying all of these topics. So was the Treaty of Versailles fair? To what extent was the League of Nations a success? How far was Hitler's foreign policy blamed for the outbreak of war in Europe? Who was to blame for the Cold War, which is what we're going to have a look at today? And our last section is Germany 1918 to 1945. Now I've put that separate because that's an in-depth topic. So the other ones are quite short. You might spend half a term to a term doing them, but Germany in depth, you spend a long time looking at the details of what happened. What's really nice is that that means you also cover the third bullet point down how does Hitler's foreign policy, so they can be combined into one unit. So we've got the Treaty of Versailles, League of Nations, Germany and the Cold War. So you're looking at quite modern history. In terms of our exam paper, we have three papers that we do. We do paper one, paper two and paper four. That might seem a little bit odd, and I will just explain. Paper three is coursework. Because we're an online school, we can't do the coursework. I can't guarantee it's your work only. So we therefore do paper four, which is another exam paper. So you can see there are structured questions and each paper has a different worth for your overall exam. So paper one is 40%, paper two and four are 30%. You have to answer two questions from paper A, and then you've got the depth study. So Germany takes over most of paper one. On paper two, you can see you've got a one question in each section that you answer. So they're obviously going to be longer questions. And in paper four, you have A, B, C, and D and sections to it. One of the papers is a source paper. So you will get given documents on the topic and you will read them and analyze them, which I know Sienna is very good at and Isabel's really good at looking at the different messages and meanings in there. So that should be okay which topic is on the document changes every year. So your teacher will tell you at the start of next year which topic is going to have the sources. So I hope that makes sense. You can see the papers vary. You've got two hours, one hour 45, and then paper four is a nice one because it's only an hour long. It follows the same skills that you have now. So you've got to have knowledge, names, dates. You've got to have strengths and weaknesses. So we're particularly interested in cause and consequence. 
And one of the questions, if you remember, was how far was Hitler to blame for the world war? So that's a cause and a consequence. And then we have analysis, so your points of view. We are going to spend the next 30 minutes looking at the Cold War. And we're just going to have a look at a little section of what would be on this paper, because the Cold War paper is really interesting. It covers relations between the USA and the USSR, which is where we started. It then looks at the Korean War, the Vietnam War, which are all quite recent. It looks at what's happening today between Russia and America. And it starts to think about the different techniques that we use, the atomic bomb and all of those kinds of things. It's a really interesting unit. There's lots of different little things that are going on. So in this example, we're going to describe the differences between capitalism and communism, explain how the ideological differences could lead to tensions and begin to explore other background causes of tensions. Isabella, what do we mean by ideological? Um, I don't think I've heard the word ideological before. That's all right. So ideological can be broken down. You've got the first bit, which is idea. So it's just a set of ideas that someone believes in. Ideological. So just take the word ideo and think of ideas at the start. And it is a set of beliefs and ideas that somebody has. So we've already got a key term. Right, I love filling the gaps. So to give us some overview, please, can we fill in the gaps, lovelies? You have three minutes and then I will pop through some answers with you. You can do it on paper or on your class notebook. I don't mind. Right. Eleanor, do you need a little bit more time or have you finished, sweetheart? It's 
Excuse me, Miss, did you ask me? Yes. Have you finished filling in the gaps, sweetie, or do you need a bit longer? So, because I'm a parent, I know the answers to all the questions. But because I'm a parent and I don't know if it's fair to answer the question. <laughs> That's okay. I will. And I'll... also, I'm coming from the East Europe and I know very good this history. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. My daughter, she she's going to join a little bit later because she's in another school. We just would like to follow the some of the lessons just to have a look if we can choose from the next school year. Yeah, that's no problem at all. But if I you wish to, I can help the students with some of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> right then, lovelies, I will pop the answers up. <laughs> yeah, I can you. help if they wish to. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I didn't realise you were a parent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right, so we've got the Cold War is the name given to relationships that develop between the USA and the USSR after World War II. The world was divided into two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. Each had a different economic system and political ideology, which led to significant tensions between them. So it involved tensions, threats and propaganda. Ahmed, what do we mean by propaganda? Uh, false or incriminating slash, uh, like depicting the other country in a bad way. Yeah, good. Uh, it can be... Yeah, so giving a false image of statement. something. And it could be complete lies, it could be an exaggeration, it could be just twisting the truth. So yes, propaganda is giving a false view of something. So this was known as the Cold War. There was never any direct conflict. So the two countries didn't actually fight. There weren't bombs, there weren't soldiers, but there were lots of threats, there were lots of talks, and that made it a really, really worrying time for people. So that's what it means at the bottom when it says they never have any direct war. So they weren't directly fighting each other. It was rhetoric. It was what they were saying and threatening to do. So I'm going to give you a piece of research to do for five minutes. What I would like you to do, we've got a map, we've got the USA, we've got the USSR. I would like you to think, what do we mean by capitalism? What do we mean by communism? And what does that involve? So we've got two key terms and we need to have an explanation and we need to be able to link it to what those countries were like. So we're thinking about them during the Cold War, not now. OK, so in your research, you need to look at the Cold War and you need to think about what do we mean by communism, what do we mean by capitalism, and what did it look like in each of these countries. So we have five minutes. Any questions, let me know, because I'm obviously sat here.
two minutes and then we will take some feedback. Right, Sienna, tell me about one of the countries. Pick which one, lovely, and tell me how it relates to capitalism or communism. Um, so I wasn't too sure, but I found that for like USA, they use the capitalism, which is an economic system which is uh like from free from state control and it's like private ownership. And the USSR used communism in an ec economy, which is where they like try and make like it's sharing wealth and it's social. It's like a socio-economic system. I wasn't too sure on what I was meant to put. No, that's good. So we've got an economic system. It's about wealth. It's about growth. Isabella, did you manage to find out about communism? Um, I I didn't do communism, but um, I kind of did the same as Cyan. But I mean, I could kind of like say, like a kind of brief definition what capitalism is. Yeah. Um. So um, capitalism is basically like a country. It's like a country where um the people. Uh, kind of run the, the like the um like kind of run the places and stuff and not really the governments so it's kind of more like free will you could say I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs the people that start work up there's still a government that runs the country but individuals are free to start businesses and to make money from them Let's have a little look at our next slide because these are quite complicated ideas. So we're just going to have a little learning check and have a little look. So first of all, capitalism then. So individuals own and control land and money. This is what you were talking about, Isabella. It's not free will, but it is individuals being able to go out there and do things to make themselves rich and they can control what they do. They're free to buy what they want to. So you'll have your own house, your cars, furniture. If you fancy a new iPhone, you can go and get a new iPhone. And, oh, I think I'll get satellite TV today. So you can go and get satellite TV. So it's quite a luxurious kind of lifestyle if you can afford it. Total freedom to live where you want. I think I'll just move to Florida. I'm fed up with Canada. And you can just get on a plane and move. You don't need anybody's permission. You don't need to ask. You can just go. 
and buy a house if that's what you want to do. You can set up any new businesses that you want to. You live in a democracy. Ahmed, what do we mean by democracy? Oh, Ahmed's just popped out. Look, we've got his little purple face there. So democracy is what we're seeing at the moment in America and in Britain with elections. So you can vote for who you want to rule the country. And you tend to have a good standard of living for most people, not all, but most people are able to make choices about where they live, what they want to do, what they buy. Now, Sienna, did you get round to anything on communism or would you like a few more minutes to have a look at that before I go through it? Um, may I please have a few more minutes to look through it? Yeah, that's no trouble. We will move on to communism and we'll have a few minutes to have a look at communism.
Right, Sienna, we're going to come back to you, sweetheart. What have we found out? Communism. Um, so um, I wrote under communism, individuals do not have private ownership of uh, like property of businesses and that, and the state controls all the resources and production, and it allows basic needs for all citizens, and it's about like collective decision making, and it prioritizes the good of the society rather than an individual's preferences. Yes, that's a nice contrast, isn't it? Because capitalism is more about the individual. Isabella, did you have anything to add or were you quite happy with that? Um, I have nothing to add. That's fine. Let's have a little look and see how we've done then. Dun, dun, dun. So, communism. Individuals should not have ownership of land and money it is collectively owned so that's exactly what you were saying and the government then would control property goods and production depending on where you are within a communist country depends on how strict it is there are a couple of communist countries where you're only allowed a certain number of haircuts and you're only allowed a certain number of outfits and the government dictates what you have to wear in other communist countries, you're free to wear and look like what you want. So there are different states of communism. And it's important to remember that. So ideally, it's designed to help the poor. So there's a really nice aim behind it. Whether it actually works out that way or not, we're going to have a look at in the lessons and have a think about. And we will think about, is communism fairer? than capitalism or is capitalism fairer? So the government decides what you can use, where you will work. You can't just get up and move house. You can't just go and buy satellite TV because you fancy it. And in some places, the internet's controlled. So they have their own internet. So you can't just get on Google and things like that. It's state owned and controlled. You have fewer rights. So compared to a capitalist country, you have fewer rights and there's only one political party and they can be in power for decades because it can be passed down from the father to the son to the daughter and so on. So it never changes. We're going to have a summary to check our understanding of our two key concepts. So in the middle, we have profits, a reward for hard work, only one political party, higher standard of living, the state controls the economy. Please, can you identify which of those belong to capitalism, which of those belong to communism? Oh, Isabella, that was quick. Off you go. Um, so the only one political party would be um, communism because people don't have a choice. It's just only one option and that's it. Good. So we straight away got one of them. Ahmed, what other one do you think is communist? We've got there's only one political party. What other one might come under it? Uh, you say it controls the economy. Good, yep. So the last one, which means the other two must be capitalist. Well done, because you weren't here for the communist bit, so that's awesome. So we have a little mini answer there for us to just check what we've got. And as you can see, I've colour coded them. So communism is green. And then capitalism, profits are awarded for hard work. And there is a higher standard of living. Again, that is not for everybody. So you need to remember that these are generalized statements. And there are differences within countries and between the countries that follow these rules.
we're going to have a comprehension activity. So it's a reading activity. So on the board, there are a list of questions. I'm going to pop these questions into the chat. And what I would like you to do is to use the next slide, which has lots of information on, to answer these questions. Now, some of the questions relate to communism and capitalism. Some of them relate to the Cold War as a whole. What they will give you is an understanding of what the unit is about. So you can see how did the use of the atomic bomb impact on the relationship? How did the division of Germany contribute to tensions? So they're all around this idea of tensions. There are two red questions, seven and nine. They are harder questions. So I've said they're stretch questions. So see if you can answer one to eight. Or if you're feeling really, really confident, you could start with seven and nine. That is up to you. So I will just pop up the sheet sheet as you can see there's quite a lot of information on here I would like you to use it to answer the questions please I will give you just over five minutes see how many you can get done any questions do ask or pop them in the chat and then we will get some feedback
let's have a look at one of the questions. So if we just pop back so the questions are on the main screen, that'd be a bit easier. And Ahmed, which question did you answer? So pick one question you've answered and tell us what you put. Uh, I did uh, number one. Okay, what was your answer, lovely? Uh, the primary difference uh, is that capitalism is more for the individual and communism is more for the people and uh, to make the, maybe like let's say the entire world into a communist have, have communist economy and capitalism while it has gives more specific individuals more uh, direct power and so they were they were able to fight back to with the uh to the communist ideology okay good so you've explained that in quite a lot of detail which is perfect because we've got to keep with the peel paragraphs so nothing has changed in terms of what you write for the exam we still need to have a point, we need to elaborate it or provide an example, we need to explain it and we need to link it back to the question, which is exactly what Ahmed has just done. And your exam questions will vary from two marks to 35. Now that sounds a lot, but it isn't, so don't panic. It is that you have an hour and a half just to write five Peel paragraphs and you're all quite capable of doing that. And I know you've been practicing since you joined how to put together those paragraphs. Isabella, we have a hand. Um, so it took me a while to read, but I did the uh, fourth question. Perfect, off you go then. I love a volunteer. <laughs> okay, um, so the two superpowers um, they kind of like uh, consisted of like um, it consisted of the USA and the Soviet Union and the superpowers word was kind of like a definition for those two countries in the Cold War, I believe. Yep, that is perfect. We're going to pick on Siena to do our plenary. So, Sienna, we have a set of pictures and images. I would like you to see if you connect any of them and explain why they might have caused tensions between the two countries. So it's an analysis question. Okay, um, so for the uh, first one with like the, it, it represents, I like, sorry the first image represents the nuclear weapons i think and this created tension because like it like escalated the arms race that they had and it introduced a new level of power which made other countries feel like unmatched and propelled like to verse attack them and uh, like the new advancements led to um more ongoing rivalry because like those two superpowers of USA and um, USSR wanted to try and uh, be more superior than the other all the time. Excellent. So the two countries' egos came out. They were trying to be better than the other one to prove that communism or capitalism was superior. Anybody else got any other links between some of the images? Oh, Isabel, no, Sienna, you've got another one. Off you go. Um, so the one with the liberty above it, it represents um, communism and the green bag represents capitalism. And so USSR used um, communism and USA used capitalism. And they it created tension because they thought that um, the difference in econ their economic systems 
um, were like their one was more superior and they like kind of mistrusted the other nation and it kind of brought more co conflict to prove why theirs was better for their country. Good, so they all think that theirs is better for the country and they also want other people to convert to their method and that is called the domino effect. I don't know if anyone plays dominoes or when you put dominoes in a line and you press one and they go click, 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 click and they all fall over. Someone must have done that. Or you put cards in like a V-shape and you press them and go zhoo. And there are some amazing things on the internet where they go up hills and down hills and through obstacle courses. So it's the domino effect. It's the idea that if one country is capitalism, it wants to make all the other countries around it capitalist. And the same for communism. So if one country is communist, it wants to make all the countries around it communist because it believes they are the best. Right, that brings us basically to the end. So as I said, we were just looking at an example of one unit and we were just looking at the Cold War. We were thinking about the differences between capitalism and communism. We're explaining the ideological differences. So we weren't sure about that key term at the start, but you've managed to explain it to me very, very well. So the ideology, the ideas, what communism believed, what capitalism believed. And then we were bringing it in to explore background causes of tensions. Isabella, is that the same rabbit as last time or is this a different one? This one's a different one. What's this one called? Um, I haven't decided because we have 10 babies now. They are so cute and they're very clean. <laughs> Given they're white, they are spotless. They are so sweet. Did you breed them yourself? Um, yeah, we have a lot of rabbits. We have we had a male and a lot of females, but we sold the male. So you should have less rabbits appearing. Right, on that note, with a little bit of a bunny, which is a cute factor, we will finish our taster lesson, guys. All the best, and I'll probably see some of you later for geography and some of you next week for different activities. So bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.